What's this? There. Yes, it's a piece of metal. Oh, there's a biscuit behind it. Right, now I've got the camera out of the sink. Finally, this piece of metal has arrived. I mean, this has been the longest, most expensive piece of stainless steel that I've ever ordered. <sighs> right, 50 mil 316L. Let's get on with this at last. So I'm just going to triple check this uh, just to make sure I've got the right thread. I know what it is, but so it's uh, three quarter inch, 16 UNF. So 16 and uh, yeah, three quarters. I've just been super sure. Now. This is the only three quarter inch by 16 UNF that I've got. This is a hand reamer. So I'm gonna to have to do this by hand, kind of. I'm just gonna check the book and uh, UNF, UNC, UNF. Nominal size three quarters, uh, tapping size is 17.5. Oh, I bet I haven't got one of them. Now, I know you're not supposed to do this, but I haven't got one of the, uh, I haven't got a big enough uh, tap wrench, so this is just gonna have to do. Right, I'm pretty sure there was going to be an e there would have been an easier way of doing that, but anyway, let's test it. Perfect. Okay. I mean, it's a really simple part to make, uh, but obviously it needs to be right. Everything needs to be right. Okay. One more to go on that final pass and the same on the other side. Um, okay, I don't do this very often, but I've, I've moved the, uh, the workbench, which is actually on wheels. The idea is I can kind of roll it around, uh, but normally, because I've got limited space, normally leave it up against the wall. But anyway, um, I've, I've wheeled it out so I can get round to finish my welding on these. So I'm gonna weld in these uh, these 50 millimeter um, electrical penetrators. 
I manhandled these up on my own. They are about on the limit of what I can, I can lift. Managed to do it without injury. So, uh, <clears throat> so I've, I've got, I've made the other one of these and I'm, uh, I'm just plodding around doing my, my TIG route runs. I mean, there's not really much to, much to show. It's a little bit, it's just a bit tedious work really. not the neatest in the world but it is down into the root of the joint so you can see here I've got uh, well I'm right down to the bottom so I can uh, go in now with the stick I've done the same on that one uh, so my camera is flat so it's attached to the charger so I can't really show much but I'm just um, coming around on the filling runs now for these um, electrical penetrators and uh, get those finished off now biggest problem is I'm going to prop that up there. Biggest problem is I'm running out of rods. This is all I've got left of three or nine mollies, and uh, I don't think it's going to be enough to do both. So I'm just going to I'm just going to uh, focus on doing this aft end cap because this is the cap I want to put on first. It doesn't really matter if I don't get the other one completed. But just while I'm uh, I'm just waiting for these uh, electrical penetrators to cool down. A little bit not too much but I'm just gonna set up and uh, cut the holes for the other um, pipe nipples for the variable ballast tanks because somebody welded the ends on the wrong way round that's always good with the old mag drill step that up there I don't know why I find this machine really quite terrifying, but it's super good. <laughs> so it's taking about one, not quite a rod per run round. I've got another. Uh, one, two, three, five to go on this. So if we say a rod for each run, so then I've got many, four, five, six, seven left. I don't think I'm going to get enough for this other one, but I might be able to get those other um, pipe nipples in. So I'll risk it and use one. I've already heated this up a bit. I'm just going to go in to that mark there. This is machinist's square. I'll be a bit overkill. Make these rods last.
So that's kind of what's left of my uh, my camera stand. It's just broken on me. Uh, so I'm going to finish this one off. And you'll have to go over here on the little temporary magnetic stand. I'm afraid it is more welding, but that is the nature of the beast at the moment. Be all right with rods. Two more runs to go on the other on those pipe nipples. I might actually be able to get that other one done. Let that cool a bit, a little bit on the screaming hot side. I don't want to overdo it. Right, last final run done. So that's the, sec uh, the inside done. Uh, I've got one more run to go around on that one, but I've remembered that I've got the uh, other side of the electrical uh, blue glow penetrator to do, and I'd rather do that than do the other one. Yeah, here, I've just got one more run to go around on this, so uh, I, I want to get that done. Let's do that now. Okay, I've just finished off the, uh, the final final pass on the uh, Blue Globe electrical penetrator, and I've got four, I think, and a bit rods left. So I can carry on, see how far I get with that last one. So I know I said I wouldn't go on about the 3D printing, but this is submarine related, so bear with me. Uh, first thing is the standard K350 model, the yellow one that I did, that is on its way now across the United States. Sorry for the delay. Um, this is a um, supercharger blower contraption, um, which my, my friend who helped me with the uh, with the stainless steel polishing the other week, he asked me to, to print one of these for him for an art project that he's doing for a Guernsey art project. Um, so I, I did this prototype first of all out of uh, PLA. Um, and that turned out to be a little bit too big and it's also PLA. So then I did this one, which is, um, this is gonna be the real thing now. And this is out of um, PETG, which is a bit more difficult to print, but turned out quite good. But um, this one, I just happened to use the, the white and the red, uh, just because that was the colors that I have. And it's just given me an idea. So just bear with me. Couldn't resist doing that. 